Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, today I am going to talk about uh, uh, ExtraDB clusters uh, CI testing as this mini conf is about. Uh, okay. Hope you had a good lunch and uh, not too much carbohydrates since it makes you sleep. Uh, okay. okay, so this is the basic outline. Okay, why, why, uh, so the first question is why, why do we waste all the time with the CI testing? I mean, I, I think the answer is obvious. We, uh, the developers need uh, more free time to think and to do other things. So I just uh, linked to this uh, XKCD one. It's not directly related to compiling, but you know, so having a CI pre uh, allows us to do other things. You know, they are fencing there, but other things as well. Uh, on a serious note, uh, when there was uh, less or no CI, it was very hard, uh, it, it is and it can be very hard to test all the known uh, points of failure of uh, something like PXE, which is basically, yeah, as I say, the PXE and Galera. PXE is nothing but MySQL, I think all of you know about MySQL D. So this is uh, uh, synchronous replication added to MySQL D. Uh, and Galera is an external library which facilitates this communication between uh, uh, homogeneous MySQL D instances. So that is the PXC and Galera part. And uh, MySQL testing framework, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of it here. It's, uh, it's called MTR and uh, that is uh, being used here. That is one of the components, it's not the entire thing. And uh, when I say reuse, what I mean is I'm using a lot of, uh, reusing a lot of the components which are already being tested. But again, since this is a cluster, some changes are required. So I'm not testing a single server. I'm testing a whole cluster, like two or three nodes or more. So the role of communication, uh, networking issues, locking issues, particularly locking when, since it's a distributed uh, transactions uh, will be there. So the locking issues uh, will be prominent. And uh, latency, yeah, that is the final thing which, which can be a really bad killer, particularly in synchronous replication. Okay, so the first thing which comes to mind, uh, uh, at least to my mind, when somebody says continuous integration is nothing but Jenkins. Uh, so the way we have Jenkins set up is that when, when I do a, a VCS check-in, the VCS we use is Bazaar. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> fine. Uh, then uh, today I read on LWN uh, of uh, an article from Eric Raymond. Uh, who said that Emacs should move from Bazaar to Git. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, from a VCS check-in and to the building of packages. So the whole thing uh, is set up like that. Uh, the VCS check-in triggers uh, polling. Uh, the, there's a polling which is set up on the Bazaar repo and, uh, and that in turn triggers builds and then the tests and finally the packages because of course uh, uh, we need feedback, continuous feedback on the packages which have been built. So yeah, th those are required. It's not just the test, it's not just the continuous testing which uh, we rely, rely on, but also on human feedback. Because of course that's necessary. Anyways, uh, so as I said, that's the manual triggering versus polling. I am not sure how many of you are uh, using Jenkins uh, actively here, but I think you, you can make out from that. Manually triggering is where uh, uh, I, I, call, I call the first build remotely and that triggers the rest of the builds. Polling is where uh, it periodically polls like five minutes or one hour or something like that. And uh, there are dependencies and blocking. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, between the uh, build job and the testing job and the packaging job and, uh, and the VCS job, there, there needs to be dependencies which are uh, created here. And there's a build blocking also sometimes I need to block a certain dependent build uh, so, that, uh, so that build A is complete, after, only after build A is complete, build B is triggered, you know, things like that. Because uh, one, it is to save the hardware uh, resource because I don't want to trigger duplicate builds. Uh, so that is the blocking part. Okay, anyways, the workflow, one of the main components of our workflow, uh, at least in PX, is the parameter is triggers. What that means is from VCS, uh, <coughs> we use Launchpad and I'm not sure how many of you again uh, uh, use it uh, on a daily basis, but it's not uh, fastest of its kind when you do a v uh, VCS clone. So 
when you do a VCS, uh, we don't, we want to avoid duplicate clones. So what we do is we have a separate job for just for the cloning of from the launch pad and rest of the jobs make use of that tree which has been cloned so to reduce the network uh, IO. So the, the part played by parameterized triggers is uh, the rest of the jobs will require certain parameters from the VCS clone, things like revision, uh, bazaar revision. Uh, no. Oh, okay. okay. I'm not using Unity, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think it's the DPMS. Anyways, <laughs> okay. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, so that's the VCS cloning part. Yeah. So the triggers. Uh, okay. Fair for Okay. So certain parameters will need to be passed to the uh, job side of it. So that's the part of the uh, parameters. Parameters. Uh, by the way, uh, we are using the Bazaar plugin for uh, Jenkins, which I think many have uh, written, including Stuart, some others, and uh, I think some from MariaDB as well, I guess. Anyways, so uh, so that's the build plum pl plumbing and fork and join. What I mean by fork and join is, uh, so a VCS job, a VCS clone creates triggers like three jobs. So we have to wait for all of the three to complete. Uh, to run further tests or to trigger packaging because it doesn't make sense to have packages where the tests have failed, right? So that's what I mean by fork and join. So it has to wait for all the jobs to complete and only then it can proceed. Uh, and then there are matrix builds. Uh, this is a matrix build uh, is something which was, uh, which I found uh, curious when, uh, while, when I started using Jenkins, it had a picture of matrix reloaded and all that. Thing. Anyways, so what this is, uh, this helps when you're doing a build for many platforms. Currently, we have like 13 into 2 builds. So that's like release and debug builds into 13 uh, different distros and 32-bit and 64-bit. So when one of them fails, it doesn't make sense to trigger all of them again, right? So this is uh, where we use matrix builds to do selective rebuilds. And uh, so that uh, the job is finally green. So the next one is Sysbench. I think uh, most of you may have uh, used or heard of it. Uh, though the latest Sysbench is not packaged yet in the distros. I think you may have used 0.3 or something. But this, the latest one is only in the uh, launch pad. Anyways, so uh, we use one of the features of that which was recently added uh, on my request because the developer of Sysbench also works for Percona. So it, it, it was for simultaneous dispatch to all the nodes uh, because th that is what we require when we test a cluster. Uh, we want requests to be dispatched to all the nodes at the same time, both read and write requests. And since this is a synchronous replication, we want to be really strict about uh, several things here. And we reuse uh, MTR here. Again, uh, we use that to start and stop servers and things like that. It's, uh, but, but it is, uh, its scope is much larger than that, but the, here it is used only for that. Again, what is Sysbench used for? Uh, one is benchmarking. I think that should be obvious because Sysbench is basically a performance testing tool. Uh, so what we, what we do is we keep a history of, from every test and then finally we do a graphing and uh, we can see where, so, so that we can easily find out the commits where their uh, performance regression was triggered. It saves us from, uh, uh, bisecting the tree again, which can be tedious, very tedious. <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, the next one is testing. Uh, this is something uh, not used uh, much. I mean, Sysbench is not used for testing, but basically uh, the reason why I added it is there are certain bugs which are triggered only when you are uh, doing a performance testing. I mean, when, only when there's a high load, when there are really high number of threads, when you are when your aim is to uh, test the performance, there are bugs which, are, which can be triggered at that moment. So, but, and this, since this is a synchronous replication, uh, we use it for, we use suspend for testing that. And there are many issues which we have found out through that. Uh, many crashes, actually. Uh, and uh, since uh, this, basically the PXE involves transactions which are sent to other nodes. There's something like pre-commit stage. So once all the nodes agree on it, and they only then the apply happens. So otherwise there will be rollbacks and things like that. Or uh, sometimes in some cases the transactions on other nodes they are aborted. 
since uh, it is uh, uh, since those things are involved the sysbench testing helps a lot here uh, when i say bf abort it's it's a brute force abort uh, when uh, a local transaction is killed to make way for a global transaction so that's so there are a lot of uh, complexities involved here i think you can see and then this is uh, I, I deeply apologize if i missed this earlier how do you get multiple nodes out of Jenkins? It's uh, not. It's not on the Jenkins. It's uh, it's the sysbench test. Yeah. Uh, the Jenkins. Uh, the the sysbench is one of the tests on Jenkins. Right, but it says all nodes. Yeah. So the sysbench, uh, you can like, you can use like MTR and start many nodes at a time, and then you can start sysbench separately, and you can have it dispatched to all the nodes through sockets. It takes like do all the sockets at the same time. Okay. And uh, one of the properties of Sysbench is uh, they have uh, optimized it so that uh, it does not involve any latencies of connection uh, creation and teardown. So it creates one connection and you know it keeps dispatching the requests. It's just on one physical machine now. Right, so node to me means physical Yeah, so and there so are like, so, the, so there's like CentOS 6, 32 bit, CentOS 6, 64 bit, things like that. Yeah. CentOS. Yeah. Uh, okay. Please. Anyways, the next one is RQG, which is, it stands for Random Query Generator. Uh, it's an immensely helpful tool which has been used not just for in MySQL but also I think in PostgreSQL and Oracle as well. Uh, one of the things which is used there is combination testing. I, I, I'm sure uh, you have used uh, many uh, applications which have like hundreds of options. May not be hundreds but you know, at least uh, as many. So some, many times you, you would like to test all the combinations. Uh, there are many uh, combinations which won't be tested by regular uh, regular uh, user usage. So those things are often the sources of bugs and you don't want to wait till the user reports them. So this is what helps uh, uh, in the combination testing where you can test different combinations. But as you may have guessed by now, if you test all the combinations, uh, it can be very, very large. So some kind of pruning is required there. And uh, th there are configurations, uh, change configuration changes which you can do for, for that. Uh, there are other ways of pruning, but uh, I wouldn't go into that now, but it's, it's, it's something which requires uh, manual uh, tuning to reduce the number of combinations. The combinations which you know are, uh, are not uh, the right ones, logically, not, uh, not in terms of application. As I said, the corner cases are where the bugs usually tend to hide and uh, you would like to test them as much as possible. Uh, and the second part is uh, stress testing. As you, uh, the, one of the other aims of random query generator is to test it with all possible queries. I mean, it generates queries which a normal user uh, or a normal application may not even uh, use. The aim is again, uh, we, but we have seen some edge cases where users have like very, very uh, eccentric queries. Anyways. So uh, this, uh, as I written there, MM, MS, MMM. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of um, um, MySQL async replication term, but this MM stands for master, 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 slave, master, master, master. Now you may be wondering why, the, why I'm saying that master, slave and all in the synchronous replication. But basically what I'm saying here is that uh, the role, it's the role. So when I do a MS testing, I'm uh, writing to one node and reading from the other node. Also reading from the first node as well, but you get the point. And uh, as I said, the locking bugs, the locking bugs have been uh, really uh, problematic uh, since uh, this, uh, the testing has been started and we have uh, recovered a lot of issues. Basically with the DDL and MDL. The DDL stands for uh, data definition language, for those of you not aware. Uh, and the MDL stands for metadata locking. Metadata locking was introduced in MySQL in 5.5 uh, and it has been there since. So it is mainly used for DDL. And, uh, and 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 uh, since uh, in PXC at least when there are distributed transactions, the locking can be really a source of headache. So that has been tested, and other kind of locks like InnoDB row deadlocks. Uh, you know InnoDB even if it has. Uh, uh, lower granularity locking than MySM, it still has uh, row, uh, row locking. So 
there can be row deadlocks and uh, which are not that bad but uh, they, they can introduce a lot of uh, rollbacks and uh, brute force aborts and can introduce latency. So it, it is good to debug them as uh, soon as possible. And finally, the hung tests, uh, by that what I mean is uh, there are many times when there can be serious bugs which can cause the server to deadlock. As the, but when I, well, what I mean by deadlock is that it doesn't take any queries further. So there are a few things we have done there uh, to, to uh, as mentioned in the talk earlier, like a watchdog timer. So it checks if the server is up or down uh, every uh, few seconds between the queries and if it's down. What uh, we do is we send a six segui and it triggers a backtrace and we get uh, you know BT full thread deploy all BT full and things like that and uh, from that it's much easier to debug why the server was hung. And this, this is the end to end testing also it works as smoke test. So the point of this is that every system has uh, one of the one of those uh, things uh, which uh, which is one of the critical components of the system which and which also means that by testing which you can say that the system works as expected. So, so snapshot state transfer is one of those things. Basically uh, what happens is as I have said in the flow you start a node, you load it with data, you start another node. The another node starts a SST. Uh, by, by that what I mean is it get it, it, the state of the node 1 is transferred to node 2. And then on node 2 I check some. So to make sure everything is working as expected. And it uses uh, extra backups uh, test suite because uh, SST is done with extra backup. Uh, for those of you not heard of extra backup, it's basically a, a backup utility for MySQL, which uh, which is uh, mainly used for InnoDB, and uh, which which uses very uh, less locking. <coughs> Anyways, uh, so since that is a critical component, uh, we use that as a, we use that for end-to-end -end test. Anyways, and one more uh, function of that, this end-to-end -end test is to test on different platforms. We don't want, uh, since uh, some of these uh, tests involve, some of these components involve distro-specific uh, scripts, uh, there can be issues on different platforms. So one of the side effects or one of the side advantages is we test different platforms as well. So I have written the 13 supported ones, so we support Debian and CentOS and Ubuntu and uh, their variants, so th th that becomes 13. Anyways, uh, so the outcome is that I know that after I release the package, you know, nobody comes with the trivial bug saying, you know, it doesn't start at all, you know, I won't get bug reports like that. So I can be sure that, you know, it works. At least it does this. <laughs> ah, finally, there's this replication testing. Uh, th there is a certain degree of overlap with other tests uh, in coverage of this replication testing. Oh, this I had written basically to test replication between major versions like 5.5 and 5.6 and vice versa uh, to facilitate uh, rolling upgrade which can be very uh, hairy at times. Uh, so this is for uh, testing upgrades and downgrades. It reuses earlier tests which I had mentioned like MTS is mentioned, SST. It basically starts a node, it starts, uh, lo it loads it with data, starts second node, SST happens, then you upgrade this node, then you shut down this node, and then you bring it up again, and then you run queries to make sure everything works. So there are a lot of things involved in this. But uh, again, this helps a lot with uh, testing the replication between major versions. But it can also be used for like five uh, minor versions as well, but there's no point since other tests cover it already. Okay, miscellaneous, uh, this is some of these techniques which I had used. Uh, you may notice them if you have a, uh, uh, th th this, this lock weight timeout is not the InnoDB lock weight timeout. You may be thinking of it's the MDL lock weight timeout. Basically it is set to one year by default. I don't know what's the reason for that. Uh, what happens is uh, if when it's set to one year, uh, the test can hang for a long time, but without uh, revealing any, revealing where it, where it may be, where the problem lies. So what I had done was I set it to a like very low value, like 50 seconds or something like that. And what happens is when there's an issue, it crashes. It's always better when you are debugging for a server to crash. So you can get a valuable backtrace and things like that. Or, or it may hit assertions in the debug builds. So, so as I've said that, we use, uh, we, we do releases of the release builds, but we also do unique debug builds, which, uh, 
so the unit uni debug builds are basically uh, uh, with the more debug info. It's not uh, your uh, uh, the GCC debug info, but the debug info uh, which is in MySQL itself. So it has like more asserts and more checks, more runtime checks and things like that. So in the debug ones, it uh, hits assertions earlier. And so you know uh, where the problem lies. Otherwise, what happens is many times it crashes several call chains away from where the problem is and uh, you won't know what's the problem. Like sometimes you get like double crash, double free or crash kind of a malloc corruption or a heap corruption. And uh, uh, most of the times it's nothing to do with where it has crashed. It's the corruption is introduced somewhere earlier. Okay, and so this is the future. We want to test at a higher level with, you know, Chef Puppet and all. It helps in testing packaging. It also helps with destroy idiosyncrasies, uh, you know, with it, especially with Debian. We have had uh, certain uh, idiosyncrasies uh, exhibited by it, for which we had to do many fixes. Anyways, uh, and uh, automated handling of test results. One of my colleagues is already working on this. So, like, when you get the results, Basically, we're, we run a very large number of tests, so analyzing each and every one of them when they have failed, especially when many of them have failed, uh, and examining them visually can be tedious, so some kind of automated uh, handling of test results is a good, like extraction of back traces. This is, this I also worked on, like, to get back traces, and also to do bug reporting, you know, to Launchpad. We use Launchpad for bugs, by the way, uh, like OpenStack, I think. Okay, who says testing can't be fun, you know? I mean, you have time and you have resources, so it can be fun, I think. Sometimes I, I, I may disagree with that, but many times it's fun. Anyways, uh, so this is the URL. Uh, all our uh, testing uh, is done in open, as in like on Jenkins, and the Jenkins URL is public, you can see it anytime. And uh, we use Bazaar, Launchpad, IRC, uh, Git. Actually, recently, I think Stuart worked on migrating it to Git. Uh, but uh, we have not migrated fully. But who knows? Launchpad uh, may set soon or when. I think this makes me the most recent contributor to Bazaar, the person who's written any code for it, fixing it up, fast and forth, get all the data around it. Yeah. <laughs> I think Canonical was working on Bazaar. I think uh, someone from Canonical was working on it, but then he quit it and he made a blog post on Bazaar. Uh, something, something, something. Uh, are any of those people sitting in this room? I think he's speaking of Yama Zunui, who did a particularly poignant blog post. Mm. People keep telling me I should do one. <laughs> but uh, Bazaar works, uh, but sometimes I get Python backtraces when I'm doing something. Anyways. So there's a degree of overlap among tests. Uh, it is uh, important because many times a single test may miss it. So we want, if, if the bug is missed in one place, we want it to be caught somewhere else. So that is one of the things which I intended uh, with these tests. So there is a degree of overlap and that's uh, very much intended. And having multiple platforms also help there because it may not trigger on this, but it will trigger on that. So, and sometimes uh, uh, the, the, some like glipsy, can be different between CentOS and Debian and Ubuntu, so it helps there as well. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah, do you have any yes, questions? Questions. Yeah. Question, yes. And at the same time, Robert can set up if you want to be double time the whole thing and be on time. Efficiency? Efficiency. Efficiency. I know. Yeah. Um, given that Jenkins, Jenkins can control many nodes, but all the nodes are independent, how are you dealing with provisioning a whole cluster setup and then getting it to cooperate for a test? Okay. Uh, the, 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 no, the, node provision, the node provisioning is not done on Jenkins. On a single node, uh, okay. okay. On a single node, the different nodes of the cluster exist as processes. So, you know, so that. It yeah, so we use, as I said, MTR, right? MTR can be used to uh, bring up uh, more instances. Yeah. Whereas RQG has a native support for uh, 
uh, for the Galera, creating Galera nodes, multiple Galera nodes by default. You don't need uh, separate processes there. Yeah, that's that's true. But also, I as I mentioned, I do the sysbench uh, testing as well with the uh, high load and mostly with debug builds. So with the debug builds at a high load, uh, and there are issues, it tends to crash. With assertions, there are so when you use uh, Univ debug with MySQL, it has assertions at almost every level. I mean, and uh, it checks those assertions and it hits them and it crashes. The closer to the crash you are, the better it is in debugging. Yeah. 